to uh, Chet Amud Aleph in Brachot. It's, I'm warning you now, gentlemen, it's a very, very long Amud. The Gemara, uh, just just continuing from the previous Amud, it's in the middle of Mar the Michael Ahai, Amar the Amar of Yochan, Mishim, Rabbi Shimon ben Yochai. My Dichti, we want to understand the meaning of a Pasuk. It really begins with Amar the Amar, it begins with Amar of Yochan, Mishim, Rabbi Shimon ben Yochai. My Dichti, Vanit Vila Tilacha Hashem Eit Raton. What is the meaning of this pasuk? Vanit v'etilach Hashem ratzon. Right, we say this uh, three times. Right, ematai when ematai it ratzon. When is this it ratzon? When is this moment that is considered to be? Take a look at Rashi. Yisha shehisha ratzon, which is a desired time. When is that? B'shasha tzibur mispalal. The moment that the tzibur, the congregation, is davening. Rabbi Yosi, Rabbi Yechonin, Amir Machad. Where we learn this concept from that eight ratzon is when the tzibur is davening. The following pasuk: Kol mar Hashem beit ratzon ani ticha. Again, we see from here that Hodesh uh, Baruch Hu loves the moment when the tzibur is davening. Rabbi Acha be Rabbi Chanina Amar Mahacha. No, learn from here. Hein el kabir, the low yimaes. Hein el kabir. What is the god of of kabir of power? And I think here is referring to yeah, plus the rabbim. Sorry, kabir lo yimaes. That when you have a lot of people, when you have the tefillah of the rabbim lo yimaes, it will not be despised. Once again, we see that the tefillah as a rabbim is on a qualitatively superior to tefillah under any other situation. So again, these various um, Amorim are quoting different sources, but they all come to the same conclusion that when the tzibur is davening, it is qualitatively superior. It's a very important moment. If you can't make minion, for whatever reason, you're uh, stranded on a desert island, or you're, you're sick in bed, you have to find time to daven. If you know the minion, today Mincha Mar was at 7 o'clock, so better to daven Mincha at 7 p.m. from your home uh, than at uh, 6 p.m. or 5.30 p.m. Uh, in, in, in your home. Because you Why? still perhaps receive some sort of connection to the seaboard. Yeah. Okay, what happens if you know, you're by the boat shore and you're half by the other Mincha? Somewhere, somewhere, somewhere's happening, right? Somewhere yeah. Ideally, you know, yeah, question, yeah. it should be, it should be your shul. Yeah. So. so Something ideal. That's kind of right, right. Tanya right. Namihachi, we learn from here. Rabbi Nachman, Rabbi Nachman, Shangarish Baruch Hu, Moes Shel Rabim. Shneimar Hein El Kabir Velo Yi Maes. Uchtiv Padav Shalom Nashi Mikarov Li. So. Here, what, what's happening here in the Gemara is that it's saying that, uh, again, Hirsh Baruch Hu doesn't despise the tefillah of the Rabbim. By the way, it's true. I remember one year, I had to get off topic. Was, uh, I don't know if they, we were there in, in Gush and Yeshiva. So sometimes what happens if you miss Minyan often, and these Yeshivas, Minyan is very, very early in the morning. You so if you go to Rakota, you go to the Yeshuv, you can go to the Kotel. Yeah, there's yeah. no things. So in some Yeshuvim, you don't have too many options. But uh, if you're in the Kotel, you have lots of options yeah, when to daven. Right. And usually the Rosh Hashiva, at some point, the Mashiach gets up and screams and yells, better to daven Yechidis. You'll see why, yeah. right? You can't daven the Ramban Shul, right? Yeah. Better to daven Yechidis, at least where you uh, in Yeshiva, than to go to the local Shul. We'll see, maybe we'll have a source for that in a minute. But also, the Gemara here is going to connect. If you take a look at Rashi, Pada B'Shalom, take a look at what Rashi does here. Zesha Asak B'Divrei Shalom, behind you. What is, what's Shalom, right? What do you mean, Pada B'Shalom Nafshi? How is that an al Tfila? So Rashi says, "Yesh asak bedivrei shalom." What does this mean? Shalom. Hanu Torah dichtiv v'chol netivotei shalom v'chein gimilut chasadim not mishalom who shemizach she gomel chasid beguf al chaver who makir shehu avo who balidei achva ve shalom. So we see here that really that it's uh, not just davening I mean, b'tzibur as this idea of, of beauty, but also gimilut chasadim, and also the idea of learning Torah also has this notion of shalom uh, as, as well. So the Gemara continues, "Magar Shabbos Hu Kol Asu B'Torah Milchasadim Umit Pala Limatzibur Mali Malani Alav Ki Ilu Padaani Li Levanai Mibeinu Umas Olam." That if a person, these this, this tripartite a combination of Tfilah B'Tzibur and uh, B'Torah and Milchasadim, a person who has this uh, triple header, it's as if you've been literally redeemed from the uh, from the foreign nations of the world. It's a pretty uh, pretty powerful statement. Amar Reish Lakish, call me Shiei Shlo Beit Knesset Biro. If person has a shul in their city, the A Nichnas Lasham Lit Palal Nikra Shachin Ra. Very simple. If you have a neighbor and you don't have a neighbor that's sick, and you don't visit your neighbor that's sick, you're a terrible neighbor. So too, you have a shul in your neighborhood, you don't visit your shul, you're considered a terrible neighbor. Now you have lots of shuls, and you still go to a shul. You don't go to another shul. That's okay. But if there's only one shul, and you don't visit that shul. 
considered a pretty bad neighbor. Shnemar Koma Hashem Al Koch Shrena Raim and Ugim Banachala Shrin Khalti at Amiat Yisrael Velo Ad Ella Shagorm Galutlo. Not only that, if you don't go to the shul, you're causing exile. Lo, not just him, Lubanov. Shnemar says he nay not shame Allah's matam that bet you da a tush mitocham. So the question is, and this is one that was bothering me, the Psychic seems to be talking about Eris Yisrael only. The Nachala, Admatam, we're, the, we're talking about Bava, what about Bava? Right? How are you supposed to talk about Shuls and Bava? So the Gemara says that one day, every single Shul and what's going to happen to it? It's going to move the Eretz Yisrael. So I saw the Marsha, what does the Marsha say? If you wouldn't say this, I, unbelievable. He says that what? There's a David in a Shul that has a little bit of Kedushat to Eretz Yisrael. Why? Because since already this shul, this bayit, is only temporarily in Thornhill. It's only a matter of time before it moves to Yerushalayim. And let me tell you, the bayit will be in Yeratika. There's no question. Right? And therefore it has a little bit of a chazaka, a little bit of status of Eretz Yisrael already. And that's why you can quote a pasuk, which appears to be the only talking about Eretz Yisrael, as the Marsha says, that a shul, because it's uh, tomorrow, next week, in the future, it's going to be in Israel. It's already talking about that notion and that idea. So that, 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 that will make these psukim make a lot more sense and also make the next couple of lines make a little bit more sense as well. You'll see why. I'm really Rav Yochanan, Ika, Savi, Bavavel, Tama. I mean, were you, you know, this is what he's asking. He's saying, yeah, he says, he says, no, this is my proof, sorry, in Bavel. Tama So that's that's the question he's asking, right? What is he saying here? He's saying, what do you mean? Again, the Yitzukim seem to be referring only to Eretz Yisrael. So what does he say so he's to know? The Trying to just make sure I understand what he... What, what's he trying to say here? No. Cut me. No, that's not... That's right. That's the... I, I, I got ahead of myself there. What is the referring to? the Rashi. Rashi is saying, you know, what's going on here? <coughs> Sorry, what he's trying to say is a person who's six runs in shul. Right? A person who's six runs in shul, he's makme, he'll be conditioned. He's six runs in shul a little bit after shachris, or after marav. Meaning, davening's over, but he doesn't take off right away. He's six runs in shul a little bit longer than usual. What do we, a person like this, what will he get as a reward? Yerbu yemechem al hadama. Right? So the question is again, why? Why is it, for six runs in shul, you get longevity? What's the answer? Go back to the Marsha. What does the Marsha say? Why? Because thinking runs in shul a little bit longer than you, shall we say, need to, you still get this extra schar. Why? Because it's like you're in Eretz Yisrael. Oh. That was the... Sorry, but it took me a second to remember that. Let me finish. So again, Amar Hainu da Ahane Luhu Kid Amar Rabbi Yeshua Ben Levi Lebenai Kidmu V'chishu V'alau Lebi Kanishta. And where do we see the proof text from here? The Rishu himself told his kids, guys, for in the morning and at night, stick around. Go to Shul. Go to go Shul. Don't just leave right away. But stick around for a little bit. Ki hecha de torchu chaye. This will give you the sense of longevity. You know how sometimes people for longevity, what are they, what's a segula to lead a long life? You wear a, you wear a bend over those red things around your wrist. Could be a problem of a rezara maybe. But I'll tell you one thing. It sticks around in Shul a little bit longer also too gives you... Because you're a chusyami, maybe. So you don't need to wear those bento. What? And that's for sure not a rezar. Sure exactly. I'm Rabbi Racha, Rabbi Chanin, and Mikra. Ashrei Adam Shemayli leshaker al dal totai yom yom mishmor mezuzot pitchai. What is it exactly? The pasuk referring to a pasuk in Mishlei. Praise to the person who stays and guards by uh, my doors, and he by, stays and guards by uh, the threshold. Of the openings of uh, my houses, right? And right afterwards, in the very next pasuk, it talks about again long life. What is it referring to? The following: What is this referring to? A person who stands by the doors. You don't just stand by the doors. You're not supposed to stand. What are you supposed to do? You're supposed to walk in. You have to walk in two doors. 
length inside a shua. So what does this mean? Shnei the chizah, that's what I mean. Two doors worth, what is it referring to? Ella, no, no, no. Ema, shior, shnei betachim, v'chak achit pala. That you should, you should, don't stick around by the back doors. There's two ways, I think, to understand this. It doesn't mean, you know, it's like sometimes you notice that the back of the shuls are full, the front of the shuls are empty. So if you just literally stand by the threshold of the door, it shows if you're not so serious. Yeah, you're, shall we say, you, you're not so committed. When you take two doors worth in, now how far along is the door? Three feet. If you go six feet in a shul, that shows you're committed. If you're staying by the end of the door, it shows you're not so committed. Others actually want to say, Allah Lamaisa, that want to actually say that, no, when you, you should really don't walk into shul and dab right away. Take a few steps and then begin davening. This way, you, shall we say, your mind is a little bit clearer. I guess the, the enough community would be what happens if you walk in the back of a shul. The only seat that's available is that one seat. So the one seat is by the threshold, but that's the seat. You're not doing it out of disrespect. It's the only seat left in shul. It wouldn't be a problem to sit there. Right? Okay, that's a good thing. What is it referring to? We're talking about this pasuk. For this we should dive in. Every righteous person, right? What should it be that we find? Matzah zo isha. You guys remember by the Tanai. Matzah isha, matzah tov. This is the source for it, right? You find a woman, it's good. How do we know this? There's an Amar. Matzah isha, matzah tov. We find the, uh, the key. We find the key to goodness is actually a woman. The Marava in the West, in, uh, in Eretz Yisrael, ki nasiv yinish, atata, when a guy gets married to a lady, Amar le, hacha matzah, o motze. Matzah dichtiv. You ask a person, when a guy gets married, what would they ask the chatan? They asked him a very important question. Hachi matzah. What did you find? A matzah or a motze? Did you find a... Uh, 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 did you find something? Or are you looking to find something? What is this referring to? Matzah dichtiv matzah yisha matzah dov. Evek retzon ma'ashem. Motzah dichtiv umotzah ani mar mimavet et ha'isha. So you see this word of motzah and matzah, you know, matzah and motze is found both in context of a woman. So the question is, you ask the guy when he's getting married, shall we say, uh, what is your wife like, this... Positive, the tov, or the ra, or the negative? Now, I'm not saying that's such a good question to ask a guy on his wedding day, you know, what type of woman are you marrying? I don't know if that would go over so well. That's clearly not what it's referring to, right? Clearly it's referring to maybe, I don't know, it's, 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 it's I think a, um, you know, in other words, a tefillah that you're offering the guy, like, may you find, you know, the right, may this color you're marrying today be the, the right color, may be zochet to find the right woman. Um, others want to argue that maybe it just shows you that the husband has an influence on his wife. Mm-hmm. You can determine what type of wife she's going to be. I don't believe that's really the case. Um, mm-hmm. But yeah, if anything, it's probably the opposite. So maybe it happens more with Tefillah. May she be a, you know, the right zivu for, uh, for you. The wonderful things will happen because of it. What is this the time of finding? Not referring to a wife. Rather, Zotora, Shnemar, Tumotai, Matzah, Chayim. You find, you find life. We know that it's Chaim Hilma Chazikim, but that Chaim uh, is, is Torah. Rabbi Nachman Bar Yisrael Gamar Leid Matzah Zomita. No, that we have to daven for not for a wife and not for Torah, but for death. What La Mavet Totsaot? That you have to daven that you're not going to to die. Tanya Namiachi. We learn from here that from a Brayta Teisha Maot Ushloshim Minei Misa There are 930 ways to die. I don't know. I don't know exactly what they are, but there's a there, that sounds like a lot of different ways to die. Shneimar. <laughs> Lamot totsaot. And totsaot is 930. I didn't add that up, but that's, I think, what it is. Hachi have kasher shibukulan askara. What is the worst way to die? Is askara. Nicha shibukulan, the best way to die is neshika. What exactly is askara? Askara de maya. Kichizra begavava de amra laachore nishra. If you take a look at Rashi, how does Rashi describe what askara is? Askara is this terrible way to die, it's almost as a fixation type, I think. But he says, Ka'anfe hasirim, nisvavim b'gazit atzemer, k'sha'adam yote b'chazaka. It's like, you know, like you're, you have um, a comb. Imagine a comb going over wool, and like literally just rips it out. So again, if you do the image here, in neshama, instead of leaving easily, it's literally being ripped out, and it's like going against the, the, the grain there. I don't know, that sounds, that sounds pretty bad. Viga da amri kebeture pita, the the shade, the shade, the shade. What is that referring to? Rashi Yam Ukinus Yeshpo Mekamot Sheino Mekabel Barzel Mechabrim Luchi Asfina. So I guess referring to some type of ship. I guess where docks and Aidei Chavalim, and I guess you know roped in 
ואקסימום שבתוכם שנקבים ותורם אותם בתוך הכביש שהם גסים כמידת הנגב. And again, the, the ropes are pulling on the ship, and again, it's some sort of resistance, as also again, it's showing us this image of, I have enough communities from two of them, I don't look into it, but again, we get this idea that there's some sort of resistance of the neshama going against what uh, direction it's going in. Neshika, though, the mayakim shachal b'netia mechalva. However, the best one is this neshika, this kiss. It is like uh, taking string out of milk. I guess it's not so easy. How easy is it to remove uh, hair, hair from milk? It's not so it's pretty easy, right? It just comes right out. There's no resistance whatsoever. The, it's, uh, it's from a liquid. So again, no resistance. That's uh, according to Chazal. That's a Moshe died. So Aaron died, right? From literally being kissed by the Rosh Baruch Rabbi Yochanan Ma'ar the Eid Matzah, going back to what we were saying before, what did you dub him for? Eid Matzah Zok Vura, it's written to burial. Mari Chanina Maik, burial, that's it. Mari Chanina Maik Ra, Asmechim Alai Gil Yasisu, Kim Tzu Kaver. What is this Pasuk referring to? Those people who, Asmechim Alai Gil, people who rejoice, because they found Yim Tzu Kaver, they found the uh, burial, burial. I'm a Rava Bar Rava Shila. How you the army inish the by inish Rachme Filu Ad Zivula Bitrata Shalma. What should you do here? People say you should daven for Zivula Bitrata. What does that mean? Rashi Shelo Shalom Koy Mechayav. That a person should daven. A person should daven his entire life. You should daven for the last moment your bodily has been totally covered up with dirt. I think it's that battery. Battery died? Just please power it off. It's not that that means the battery died. Okay. Okay. All right. Looks like we'll... I'll record. Mm-hmm. I know we're up to. I'll, I'll add to it. We're up to it. Let's see if we can rip out the MP3 to it. I don't know how. On the, on the video. You think that? But okay, well, yeah. what are we gonna do? Too bad I have extra batteries. You know, on the TV on the internet. Look at that. The video on kids video. The guy will cut it. Just be too too different. I know. Yeah, I'm happy, yeah, I'm happy about that. Okay. Okay. That's pretty cool. We can figure that out. Um, so you should dive in for the very moment. The body. Marzucha Amar Leit Matzah Zobet Akise. No, what is considered the moment that you're searching for is considered the washroom. The uh, take a look at Rashi. What do you mean? She's for her, for the washroom, right? She had dar b'makom sheish beta kise. So again, guys, we live in the modern world. Where there's washrooms at every corner. Although you know, there are times you're walking around somewhere. There's what to dab for to find the washroom in the right place. But what, in, in the olden days, you didn't have a washroom every corner. So what did you dab for? Beta kise samachlo lefish haita karka zeb bevavel mitzula mayim. It was swampy. When you cholim lach for sham chafir. Remember, you're the washroom. You needed to take a shovel and to cover up the excrement. Something to go out to far field. So therefore, you dive for a place that's a, a suitable in order to a person to do their business. I'm um, Rava. Had the Marzutra Adifa Mukulahu. The Marzutra is the preferable interpretation from everyone else. So more than Isha, more than Torah, more than way to dive in a dove, and rather, it's actually finding a washroom. <laughs> That's pretty amazing. Amar le Rava, the Rafram Bar Papa le Malan Mar Mahani Mile Maalta to Amar to Mishmai the Rav Chizda the Mile Debe Kenishta. This is what he said in of everything else. This is what he taught him the Malta. What he said in the in the name of Rav Chizda, in the words that were in in, in Shua. What did he say? Amar le Hachi Amar Rav Chizda. This is what he said. My Dichti Ovei Hashem Sharitz Yom Mikom Mishkan Yaakov Ovei Hashem Shari Mamit Tu Yani Bahalacha Yoter Megnasi Avnu Midrashot. What was this great message? What was the most powerful thing you could say in a shul? That if you want to know who are the people that love God, the Sharet Zion, right from all the dwellings of Yaakov, that God loves, what is this referring to? The notion of halacha. God loves halacha. Bet Midrash more than a 
Shul, or even a place where just people learn. Meaning, that, forget the davening, forget the learning. It's the idea of pr- the world that we have to live in is practical. After the Churban Abayid, we don't have this idea of, uh, right, very practical. It comes to our own Yom Kippur. We don't have any more of the Korbanat, but we still, we still can connect to Nojah Malacha. We can still transform the world that we live in make it a little bit more godly. That's still we can do even without a Beit Hamikdash. It's difficult, but that's still what we have to focus on. So when, by the way, this is the halacha, so Mitsuyani, when, when are people found? So if you have the tzibur, if you have a congregation coming around in halacha, more, in more than just a regular shul. And this, by the way, as we're going to see in a minute, as halacha lamai said, to learn where you daven is actually going to be, sorry, to daven where you learn it's actually going to be a, uh, the most ideal place to daven. From Rabbi Meirish Havei Garcinon, the Go Beita Mitzlata Beved Knishta, came in the Shemana Laha. I used to be that what I would you know learn in one place and I daven somewhere else. No, once I heard this law and once I heard this higher halacha, the Amar Rav Chia Bar Ami Mishmei Deula Miyonch Beis Hamidah Shen Rosh Baruch Hu Ella Rosh Hal Halacha Bilvad Lo Havim Etzile. I only then davened Ella Hecha De Garcina. I only were daven where I would learn. And in fact, this is what the big shmuz where Shei Shiva used to say is, don't daven in the Ramban Shul, don't daven in the Kotel, daven where you learn. That's the most ideal place to daven. Rebbe... Is there a reason I, for that? Yes. Uh, is there a reason for that? As opposed to just a, a regular shul? Or Look, I think uh, where a person daven, where a person learns is... Uh, is, is where they're really, you know, where you're you doubling, you're trying to connect, you know, you're, you're trying to connect to God, uh-huh. and as opposed to where you're learning, trying to, God's trying to connect to you, right? God's speaking to you through learning. So to so that, extent, that makes sense, sense. that's in the same place, that's right? Cool. It's like a two-way street as well as just a one-way street. So. I think Rav Nevinsel has, yeah. he has his, they, for a while they printed like his commentary on Mishabur. Right. And then he says that it's also to go out to places like Ramban or Really? Kotel, yeah. If you're, if you're, no, if you're in the yeshiva, yeah, yeah, right. Yeah, that's always a typical shema at some point. Rabbi Ami, Rabbi Asay, Af Al Gav, the Havel Lehu, Tleisar Bei Knishta, B'Tveria. Even though I had thirteen shuls in Tveria, Lo Matzle Ella B'Me Amude Hecha, the Havel Garse. I only would daven in between the pillars of where I would learn. And as you take a look at Rashi, Bein Amude in between the pillars, Beis Hamidrash. You sit on top of these pillars, because that's where his position was, that's where they used to learn, up in the attic. And that's where he would find himself davening as well. Okay, here we go. Two dots. Let's continue. It is a person gets, shall we say, more hana from his own hard work from his hands, more than even fearing God. When it comes to fear of heaven, it's and when it comes to what a person does with his own hands in this world, it is great just here and Olam Haba, as opposed to Yerei Shemayim, it is just good in, just good here. So interesting, huh? Well, you, wouldn't, uh, you wouldn't actually think that way. You think the opposite. It's uh, counterintuitive. Um, I guess working the hands is referring to mit- mitzvah. So that's a very good question. What exactly is it referring to when we talk about Yegiyah Kapecha? Because Yegiyah Kapecha could also just mean, you know, you're, I'm a tailor, I'm a farmer. I'm that's a the first question they ask you upstairs, right? Like, did you do your business? Right, now, Taldav Asad Bermuda, Gemara Brachos. Right, right. Did your business. So... Definitely, there are those who are who, wa- who want to say it's not referring to mitzvahs, it's referring to the practical, uh, you know, uh, your, what you accomplish in this world. Right? What did you do with your hands? The question is, is, is your shemayim just uh, learning Torah, or should it just be your shemayim just be a a uh, philosophical construct well, as opposed whole, to? It's like the whole, the, you know, uh, the whole thing. That, you know, it's not just you know doing mitzvahs; it's doing everything. It's, you know, uh, so you, you get kapecha. Not, not doing a bit. Right. Yigiyah Kapecha could be a person who is practically taking Yerei Shemayim into practical daily life. 
as opposed to just your Shemayim, which is in the philosophical construct and not the practical application. Okay, it could be. Could be. Amar Rabchia. Yeah, Amar Rabchia bar Ami Mishmei Deula Lolam Yedur Adam B'Makom Rabo. Person should live where his Rebbe lives. Shkos Man Shishimi Ben Gera Kaya. As long as Shimi was alive, Lo Nasa Shlomo as Bas Paro. Shlomo did not marry Bas Paro. Fatanya, like Marsh says, what do you mean? It's a contradiction. Al Yador, Al Yador. Says somewhere else, no, you shouldn't live next to your Rebbe. Look, Kash, not a contradiction. Ha, the Kaifle, ha, the Kaifle. Why don't you listen to him? And why don't you listen to him? Meaning, Rashi, Im Kafu, Fool the Rabbo. Like Kaba, Tocha, To, Yador, it's love. You're going to live next to your Rebbe, and you're going to listen to what he says, and you'll bow to what he says, you'll fear to him, and if he suggests him, you'll listen. It's obviously better to live next to your Rebbe. If you love, if you love, if you're not going to listen, Tov Shis Rachem Ben of the Shogeg volume amazing. Better to be Shogeg. I didn't know. I didn't have to marry Bat Par. I didn't know this wasn't kosher. I think it's not appropriate. My Rebbe didn't tell me. Better to be Shogeg and be amazing and have uh, your Rebbe, your teacher, tell you something and then not listen. All right, a couple more lines and we're finished. I'm Ravuna Bar Yehuda. I'm Rabbi Menachem. It's like you'd say on that line, but we're going to leave it for another time. I'm a Rabbi Maidikti Vosveshem Yikalu. Those people who abandon God will be destroyed. That's a person who leaves a Sefer Torah open and leaves. What is this referring to? This is actually very important. I don't realize this. If they have a Sefer Torah on the Bima, you're not allowed to leave Shul. You're trapped. If God forbid to leave early, better leave before you get the Torah than before you the Torah. Rabbi Abahu Nafik Ben Gavra the Gavra. Rabbi Abahu says, no, between Aliyahs, it's also okay. So it could be that's the Halacha. The Eved, the Eved, if you need to leave, better leave between the Eved, but the walkout and the Kriyas the Torah, what you really should not do. What if you have to really go to the washroom? Yeah, very whatever. good question. Excellent. So if I'm not mistaken, don't quote me on this, if you begin hearing leaning or dubbing and you don't have to go to the washroom, finish. Finish the dubbing or finish the leaning and then go to the washroom. If, but you shouldn't begin either one of these things if you need to use the physical. Right, but once you've already started, shall we say the head there? You have to finish. Uh-huh. That's the I believe that's the that's the halacha. So there's no issue of like about the No, not apparently if you've started the head there, it's not uh-huh. a problem. Then it's okay to to finish. I think I remember that. But not to think of the government. By Rabbi Papa, I asked them psuka the psuka mahu. What about you know between psuka? Take it. I don't think so. Unclear what exactly about to walk in between psuka. For Sheshes, Mahadar Afis, Vigaris, Amar, Anan, Vididan, Vinhu, Vididaihu. That Mishnata Shakur Misefer Torah, when you read the. Yeah, when you'd read from the Sefer Torah, I would, shall we say, would stick around. Anan, Vididan, Vinhu, Vidaihu. I do what he does, and he, and he does what he does. Essentially, you gotta stick around. You really shouldn't leave in between uh, Aliyahs at all. You should uh, stay put. Um. And, by the way, that's leaving. For sure, talking you're not allowed to do. <laughs> that's for sure, right? There's no way you're allowed to talk during leaning whatsoever. Um, and in between Aliyahs, maybe you could talk to Yivrei Torah, but uh, Stam Tashmuz, for sure, is obviously going to be uh, is going to be a problem. Okay, fine. I guess that's the uh, end. We can stop here.